In the Star Wars universe, tales are widespread about the forest moon of Endor, a place rich in tall trees, horrifying monsters, and furry little murderers. But what about the other moons? Because there's a misconception long held by some, myself included, that Endor was the planet, and of the moons that circled it. This one was called the forest moon of Endor because, well, it, it's a giant forest. But no, the moon itself is called Endor, and the planet it circles is, oh, also called Endor, very creative. But the larger Endor is a titanic gas giant, and it actually has nine moons in total. But what do we know about these other moons? Can they sustain life? Have they too been exploited by the Empire? Well, the moon of Alprazar, like many other of Endor's moons, is a relatively barren place. After all, you can't expect all nine of them to be geologically rich cradles of civilization. But that doesn't mean that the moon is useless, as this metallic moon was abundant with resources, and was mined extensively by the Empire during the construction of the second Death Star. Located deep within the debris field left in the wake of the second Death Star's destruction, Fentaka is the darkest of Endor's moons. Reflecting back less than 10% of the light it receives from the system's binary suns, and the remarkably bright planet of Endor itself, whose clouds of hydrogen reflect so much light that it's often remarked that the planet acts almost as a third sun. Now Kefbir is one of the two moons of Endor that can actually support life. This ocean moon adjacent to the forest moon of Endor was at one point almost entirely submerged under water, until a number of geologic events vented the moon's water into the atmosphere and triggered a tectonic upheaval bringing new land to the surface, such as the Anquadi Islands, one of the many grassland islands home to grazing mammals, like the Shallowbuck and the Orbach. Kefbir was intended to be the original site to cradle the second Death Star, however its lack of available resources made the moon an unviable choice. Nevertheless, when the space station was destroyed, a large section of it plummeted into Kefbir's atmosphere and crashed into its sea, leaking radiation and chemicals into the marine ecosystem, killing off many of the native fish species. What exactly prevented the collision of such a large object? such as the space station's debris with the moon, from causing a wider catastrophic destruction of the moon, is not currently known. However, it's theorized that the explosion of the second Death Star's reactor led to abnormal physics and the creation of space anomalies in this sector of space, sparing the moons from much of the debris fallout. The Red Moon of Ghouls is a broken and battered place. Its patchwork surface is believed to have been a result of the astronomical body breaking up during its initial formation. The small and oddly shaped moon of Hallmacca is believed to be a rocky comet that was captured by Endor's gravity, while the larger white moon of Korkar is an extremely reflective frozen planet, but beneath its cold exterior lay a liquid ocean. The rather drab and unimpressive looking Charles is little more than a dead moon of rock and ice. Below its surface however lay an iron rich core, which could have been mined in some quantity by the Empire. Vix was another bleak moon orbiting Endor. Its nitrogen rich atmosphere rains methane down onto the lifeless moon. One moon rich in life however is the famous forest moon of Endor, a world of tall mountains, savannas, swamps and dense woodland, with trees stretching more than a thousand meters into the air. It was notably home to some 30 million Ewoks, residing in treetop settlements far out of the reach of predators on the forest floor. As the forest moon wasn't just home to the Ewoks, countless other species, both non-sentient and sentient, call the moon home, including the Yazums. Native to Endor's plains, these gangly, shaggy-furred creatures were arguably more primitive than even the Ewoks. They were, however, remarkably good singers, and one Yazum, by the name of Jor Yowza, gained fame performing with the Max Rebo band at Jabba's palace on Tatooine. The Gorax, on the other hand, were a species of giant, carnivorous, semi-sentient creatures 
native to Endor's mountains. Standing over 8 meters tall, they were strong enough to uproot trees and were known to hunt Ewoks, leading to the little furry pals creating a number of traps for the Gorax. These traps would later be repurposed against the Empire. But the Ewoks' greatest foe wasn't the Gorax, it wasn't the Empire, it wasn't even the off-world raiders who would come to hunt them in order to make Ewok jerky. It was a race of grumpy green swamp dwellers, known as the Dulocs, tall lanky beings with long ears and sharp teeth, who, like the Ewoks, lived in primitive tribal societies, venturing out to hunt for food and launch raids against Ewok villages. However, when the Empire set up a garrison on the planet, many of these savage sadistic barbarians were enslaved or executed. Which of these moons would you most like to visit? Would you try a little nibble of Ewok jerky? Let us know down in the comments and make sure to subscribe to join us again soon. Until then, catch you next time.